Blackpool have been officially relegated to the English third division. The past 12 years have been nothing short of shambolic for Blackpool, who have seen themselves fall all the way to the fourth division of English football. They've dealt with the shambolic Oyston era, and following their recent Hong Kong takeover, things look to be on the up. But as previously mentioned, following their 3 2 defeat to Millwall, Blackpool have been officially relegated to League One, and their long awaited return to the Premier League looks further and further away. But Blackpool's Hong Kong owners have come calling. And they think Mr. Rebuild is the man that can restore Premier League football for Blackpool and make them champions of Europe. And that is exactly what we're going to do today as we rebuild Blackpool. So this is the default starting 11 we have been given here with Blackpool. It's a real mix of young loaned players and some older players. We've also got an Australian in the mix. But our objective for season one is to survive relegation, rewrite the wrongs of Blackpool season and it is going to be such a tough challenge. But we begin our time in charge of Blackpool with a youthful upgrade. It is the 20-year-old Irishman Cashin joining us here from Derby County. I want to absolutely nuke this team though. And the first man gone in this nuking is going to be Curtis Nelson. Kevin Stewart, consider yourself nuked. Get to the bunker. Gary Medine's also been nuked. Absolutely over the moon with this transfer here as we're going to sign ourselves Sam Greenwood from Leeds United. We're going to pay 2.1 million pounds for him as well, which is an absolute bargain. It is about to be loan central though. The first one is for this kid. He looks like he has okay potential. Zach Emerson. He's like 58 rated, but he has like mid 70s potential. So maybe we could turn him into an underdog, unlikely superstar. Andy Lyons also off on loan. And we all know all good things come in threes. It's another loan here. Sonny Carey. Former Everton defender, Luke Garber. This is a name that I remember quite a lot from my time doing Everton career modes in the past decade or so. Luke Garber, a former wonder kid off the St. Etienne, now aged 29. That makes me feel old. An extra £800,000 come to Bloomfield Road as we sell CJ Hamilton. And it's our biggest player departure so far. £1.1 million for Keshi Anderson. I told you I was not lying to you guys when I was nuking this squad. It's another departure with James Husband off to Hartberg in Austria. Get in there, lads. This is the signing that I've been dying to make. It is a statement signing at the left midfield role. Jack Lark is going to join us here from Sunderland for £4.35 million. Pounds. A huge opening transfer window here in charge of Blackpool. But the big question remains, can we survive the drop? Can we do what Blackpool were unable to do in real life? Let's go find out. Yeah, look, we knew this was going to be a grind. Right now, though, I'm really happy with how we're going. We're seven points clear on the 1st of January. The job is nowhere near done, but this is a very strong start. Let's keep the momentum rolling. A huge blow to our starting 11 next year, though. I wanted to upgrade at the goalkeeper role, but we kind of needed the money. Chris Maxwell is departing the club on a free. I tried to renew his contract, but he didn't want an extension, and instead he's off to Alaves. This is what we want to see. Let's go. We have survived by just five points. It was ugly, but we've got it done. We have survived the relegation battle. That was my only goal for season one, and we have passed it. We have survived Cardiff, Swansea, and Millwall, surprisingly, all going down. And as we scroll up the table, the sides heading to the Premier League are going to be Norwich and Preston. I was not expecting to see Preston. To Manchester Derby just like in real life that Man City has won. And West Ham win the Carabao Cup. Sheffield United have taken down Burnley. It's ironic because these two teams at the time of recording have automatically been promoted to the Premier League. And they're facing off in the final in this simulation. What a season one though for Jerry Yates and Sam Greenwood. 16 goals in 19 goals apiece. They have absolutely stepped up and were crucial players in our survival. Saying goodbye to a couple players though. Some that were here on loan and and some that are moving on or in Liam Brud Bridcut's case, retiring. Season one is in the books though, and it is time for us to get out of this fight or flight mode. We need to start thinking about building towards a Premier League return. Really need to make some big moves this year. First position I want an upgrade at is the right midfield role. Jezran Raksai is formerly of Charlton at loan last year, but he's a, his parent club is Crystal Palace. So we're going to try signing him here from a manager who looks like nobody. Three million pounds and Roy Hodgson dipping into the field fountain of youth and accepting our offer. Roy, you're looking good. But there it is, lads. Our first signing of season number two with Blackpool has been 
confirmed. I hope I'm pronunciating his name correctly, but it is Jezeran Raksaki joining us here from Crystal Palace. So we got fortunate Grimshaw, our former backup goalkeeper, had some really solid growth last year in a 68 rated. So I'm going to keep him as our primary shot stopper, but get a backup here, a young backup, young Scotsman Duncan K is going to join us on a five-year deal. Of course, Charlie Patino was at our club on loan last season, and in real life, Blackpool have submitted an offer to sign him on a permanent deal, which was rejected there, but we're going to make it a permanent in, in this game, in this rebuild, as we sign Charlie Patino from Arsenal for £2.9 million. Pounds. It is time, though, for our first player departure of the season, Owen Dale, off to the Portuguese League. I just converted Jack Clark from a left midfielder to a left winger, and that took him from a 73 to a 75. I'm very happy with that. We had our first permanent departure. Now it's time for our first loan of season two. This goes against everything I believe in. This goes against every moral fiber in my being, but I've sold an Australian. Kenny Dougal off to Ibar. I've got to follow my own advice. Don't get butt hurt if I sell your favorite player. The OGs remember that one. And we're also going to be parting ways with our German defensive midfielder. A complete restructuring of the midfield this year. Tom Tribal off to... He's our first non-English signing of the season, but we're going to sign the Serbian midfielder here, Lazar Samadzic from Udinese for four million pounds. That is a steal. He is the... Ster it's, it's a Serbian steal. Already after a year in charge or a year and a half in charge of this team, we are putting together something brilliant, lads. I'm really excited for this season. Do not find ourselves in the relegation battle. I want to be pushing for a top half finish here in season two. All right, things are not going great, lads. We're sitting 15th, which is better than this time last year. But look at the points. We're four points from safety. We need to stick a rocket up there and get ourselves up towards this top half of the table because we're only two points away from nine. Let's go on a run rather than being in the relegation dogfight. Jordan Thornley, our captain, Marvin Ekpeteta, is off to the Dutch league. We get 2.7 or 2.5 million pounds for him. And we're also selling Callum Connolly. And we have blown our entire transfer budget on one signing at the center half roll. But we have gone out and emptied the bank account, blowing our entire transfer budget on one signing. It is the Belgian center half, Zeno they're bowl cut. So we've actually, that's ironic. We've gone down one position from January, but we have comfortably survived relegation. 11 points clear of Huddersfield. It's not as high as I wanted to go, but second season syndrome hasn't struck us. And considering where Blackpool is right now, I guess that's a win. It is going to be Coventry, Ipswich, and Huddersfield going down. Meanwhile, as we scroll up, it is going to be Palace and Brentford automatically returning to the Premier League. Manchester United win the FA Cup. Man City win the Carabao. And it is going to be Michael Carrick's Middlesbrough getting promoted to the Premier League. I did not expect to see that. Another incredible season here for Jerry Yates. I'm kind of sad that he wasn't like 21 years of age at the start of his save because dynamic player potential could make him so solid right now. Also, turning Jack Clark into a left winger was the best thing we did. That got him a nice plus two boost to begin, but he's already hit the 80 overall marker. This dude's trajectory is unreal. But we can have all... All the players we want getting to 80 overall. We need to get ourselves up to the Premier League. I'm starting to starting to lose my mind with these mid-table finishes. Do you see my transfer business? It is so straightforward. I want to improve the backline triangle. The left back, the goalkeeper, and the right back. Those are the three upgrades I want this year. I want balance in the squad, and those areas need it desperately. Free agent goalkeepers are a godsend. They are the best thing since sliced bread, and we have just found another regen goalkeeper here who who is going to be surely, surely a stud. 77 rated Spaniard, John Ruiz, a free transfer. He's got youth on his side and he is a monster upgrade to the side. Welcome to Blackpool. It is the season of Spaniards, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus Vazquez is going to join us here from Valencia. A cut price deal of 8.4 million pounds. We can sniff out a bargain, can't we? Time for us to say goodbye to an absolute stinker of a player though. Trusty off to the Saudi league. 
League. He was 59 rated. Speaking of things there's no way I'm doing, there is no way I'm selling Sam Greenwood. Gonna get rid of Daniel Grimshaw though, selling the goalkeeper to Besiktas for 1.4 million pounds. Not gonna lie, this might be a stretch. Some of you might know who I'm talking about, but Daniel Grimshaw looks like if Example stopped making music, grew out his beard and decided to become a goalkeeper. And we're also saying goodbye to Andy Lyons. Pack your bags, mate. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen, the triangle has been completed. We get our sells any right back. It is the Englishman Jeremy and Ngakia. The English right back is going to be joining us from Watford for 6.8 million pounds. This team is starting to look so good, lads. I don't think we should be anywhere near the relegation battle this year. We need to find ourselves pushing for promotion. Find ourselves in the playoff pitcher. Find ourselves in the automatic promotion pitcher. Next year, I want us to desperately be playing champions. Not Champions League footy, Premier League footy. I mean, if we can somehow find a miracle way to play Champions League footy, I'd take that. Come on, lads. Come on, lads. We are four points clear. Currently sitting second in the championship. Get us to the Prem. If us and Fulham can go up together, that is a dream state of affairs for me. Just a slight, tiny little signing here, though, in January. We need some squad depth at the right wing role. So we're going to sign Tyler Gooderam here from Oxford United. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time since 2011, Blackpool are headed to the top flight. Blackpool have been promoted. Get in there. Only seven losses all season and we crack the 100 point barrier. That is better than I could have expected. And we're going up with Fulham. I'm a happy man. Who got relegated? Sucked in. Sucked in Sheffield Wednesday, Derby and Wigan. You can't be as good as us. Everton have won the FA Cup here. Man City win the Carabao Cup. And I think quite deservingly, Burnley are going to be joining us in the Premier League next season. Nah, Jerry Yates. Jerry Yates, what is going on with you, my man? Jerry Yates has scored 31 goals this year. Oh my God. He's got up three overall. I wonder if we can see, like, how far can we take this with this guy? Also, 17 goals for both Clark and Raksai. We are killing it, man. So bring on season number four and bring on the Premier League. But lads, if you are enjoying today's video, so far and you aren't already subscribed to the channel make sure you bloody scorpion kick that subscribe button down below to keep up to date with all future content and help us on our journey towards 500,000 subscribers i don't think anybody's going to be surprised to hear that my goal for this season is to not get relegated i do not want to be going down to the championship again i want us to stay in the premier league by any means necessary whether we're safe by january or whether we're safe by the last day of the season i don't care let's just make sure we're say defense wins championships but it also keeps you up which is why we're gonna have Jao Victor swapping Benfica for Blackpool joining us here for 22.2 million pounds oh yeah I forgot to tell you guys Reese James plays for us but it's not the Chelsea one it's this Reese James who's off to Pisa let's be real nobody fell for that joke we could get some good money here for Jerry Yates but I think I'm gonna keep him at the squad he continues to prove that he can score goals so why not give him a shot in the Premier League we we knew we were going to have to make massive signings if we wanted to survive in the Premier League this season. And this is one of those moves. It is our club record transfer fee as we sign Joe Willick here from Athletic Bilbao. The Englishman returning to English football, 45.2 million pounds. But because of the signing of Jao Victor, I'm going to send cash in on a season long loan to Brentford. I still want him to get some solid growth. And I'm following the exact same logic here with Charlie Patino, who I'm sending on loan to Frank for the year. It's nice to see Zach Emerson getting another loan move as well. Two years in the Portuguese league. He's growing better than I expected, to be honest. The growth of Jack Clark has been nothing short of amazing. And honestly, I'm going to say it now. He's going to be one of the key reasons why we hopefully stay up in the Premier League. We're going to have to lean on him with some help from our new signings like Willick and Victor. And then Yates to score like, oh, is it going to be a one-man operation? Are we going to survive? Let's get to January 1st and see how we're going. So far, so good lads. We currently sit 11th in the Premier League here on the 1st of January. Those draws are killing us though. Eight draws and just five wins. If we can convert that, ah, uh, I was going to say if we can convert those to wins, we might be able to make a push for European football. Probably not. But we just need to continue this going though. We're only nine points clear of Fulham. Let's just stay safe and not capitulate. Charlie Patino has had an unbelievable first half of the season though at Frankfurt. Going up five overall. I love loading players out. It is so good in FIFA 20 so I think it makes sense recall him from loan and have him starting over Lazar this is a near perfect season we have 
made Premier League survival comfortably 20 points clear of Crystal Palace, who are going to be relegated alongside Fulham and Burnley. We were closer to European qualification, the Conference League qualification. And that really gives me hope moving forward. Come on, Blackpool. Man United with another FA Cup to their name, though. I mean, we were done in a replay in the fourth round. I really want us to have a run at one of these cup competitions and get some silverware because we've won zero trophies so far, and that's not all right by me. How do we go on the Carabao Cup? Man City won it. We were eliminated. Wow, we have had a stinker. We lost on penalties in the second round. Get your act together, lads. Although, I mean, I would take a second round exit every day if it means we survive in the Premier League. Champions League this year went to Bayern Munich. Napoli take down Arsenal to win the Europa League. And it is going to be Atalanta winning the Conference League. 17 goals. Oh my, 16. Th these guys are killing it, man. 17 goals for Jerry Yates. He can do it in the Championship. He can do it in the Premier League. I said it once. I'll probably say it four more times. Why couldn't have you been five more years younger? You would have been a superstar. I am ghastly afraid of second season syndrome, which is why we're going to sign ourselves a new right back here. It's an upgraded right back. It's Arnal Martinez, the Spaniard joining us here from Newcastle United, which means our triangle of left back, goalkeeper, and right back is now officially all Spanish. And after a few successful years at the club, we are going to say thank you, but goodbye to Jeremy and Garcia, who's headed on a French adventure. Cleaning out some more deadwood here. It's Matty Virtue off to Antalya Sport. And well, it's time for us to cash in on cash in. He's off to Lens. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Sometimes the jokes just write themselves. Another upgrade to the back line here though, lads. It is the Croatian regen, Tomislav Maric. 83 rated, as if his value's gone down by like 8 million after we've signed him. But regardless, this dude, 95 strength. Man is strong. Man is looks like an absolute stud. And man is now a Blackpool player. I want us pushing for some sort of European football next year. Conference League, Europa League, Champions League. That is fine by me. But to be fair, most importantly, I don't want second season syndrome. Do not drag us into a relegation dogfight. So far, so good, lads. We currently sit eighth in the Premier League. So second season syndrome is sitting back and relaxing for a second. But there is a serious chance here. I mean, we're only four points behind Man United. I don't think the tie, like the 16th gap between us and City is pretty big, but six points between us and second place. Can we get ourselves into a Champions League spot? I was planning on going out and trying to find ourselves a backup left winger for now, and I was prepared to drop like 10, 15 million pounds on that. We've found Marley Ake, who's playing at Juventus available on a pre-contract deal. It has been a long time since I've made a pre-contract expiry signing, but we're going to break the drought and bring the Frenchman across next season. And we're going to use the money we saved on Ake to bring in some more squad depth in other areas. It's going to be Callum O'Hare joining England. We're coming back to England from the Italian League for 18.7 million pounds. Go! We've got European football next year. It's not the Champions League, but we have qualified for a Europa League position. I'm very happy about that. We finished fifth. Obviously, Manchester City win the league. It's a little bit spread out. Like, it was very close halfway through the season. Ended up being a lot more spread out than I expected. But Newcastle United, their Saudi money not going to work. And they have been relegated. Man City have won the FA Cup. How do we go this year? Yeah, not great. We lost to Sheffield United in the round of 16. Man City doing the domestic treble, though. Fair play to Leighton Orient, who came to the semi-final. PSG have won the Champions League. Villarreal win the Europa League. I'm still so excited. I am so curious to see how we go next year. Meanwhile, it is Kruiva, the Romanian team, winning the Conference League. What? Oh my god, I want an excuse to get rid of Jerry Yates. I mean, it makes no sense for me to still have him around, but he just continues to deliver. 30 years of age, but he bagged himself 23 goals again. I love it. I'm complaining about it. I'm complaining about a striker scoring goals. What is wrong with me? We are going to be letting the contract of Jake Beasley expire, though. Best of luck, mate. Wait too good to be playing in the championship with Burnley. So I thought, let's go get ourselves the ultimate Croatian centre-half pairing. So we've brought Yossa Subtalo to the club. Jao Victor was great for us in terms of staying up in the Premier League, but we no longer need him at the club, so we're going to sell him here to Roma. But ladies and gentlemen, the time has finally come. It is time for us to upgrade at the striker role. Our new 
new star striker is none other than the Swedish star himself, Alexander Isak, who is joining us from Bayer Leverkusen. We have brought him back to the Premier League for £55 million. Pounds. There are no doubts about it in my mind. This team needs to be competing for a Premier League title. We need top four football. We need silverware. We are just so good on paper right now. Also, I've done this completely unintentionally, but I've built a super symmetrical side. Both of our wingers are English. Our midfield triangle here, all English. Our two center backs, both Croatian. And our left back, goalkeeper, and right back are all Spaniards. And now we've just got a random Swedish striker up top. We do find ourselves in the Europa League as well. So I'm very excited to see how we go in here for the first time. <laughs> Oh, look at the points. Nah, this Premier League table is unbelievable. We're equal first with Tottenham on 37 points, but two losses could see us drop all the... Oh my God. Literally anybody from 11th to 1st, there are seven points between 11th to 1st. This is unbelievable. All right, we need to dig in here in January to make sure that we do not fall down the table because there's a real possibility that might happen. Also, we absolutely thumped the living daylights out of our Europa League group and we're into the knockout round. It's time for us to make some changes in the midfield. I'm dropping Charlie Patino to the bench and selling Lazar Samadzic here. I want a new starting center midfielder that's going to help us get Champions League football and a Premier League title. And that man is going to be none other than the Italian center midfielder Nicolo Ravello, who Nicolo Ravella, who I have signed from Liverpool here. A great pickup, 70 million pounds, 86 rated Italian. Excited, very excited to have this dude in the team. Oh, we are so close, man. We finish second in the Premier League this season. Two points. Two points points behind Liverpool. Luckily, we've qualified for the top four, but we have almost won ourselves a Premier League title. That is such a close title race. Things definitely spread out a bit in the mid-table compared to how they were in January, but the relegated side is going to be Preston, Fulham, and Sheffield United. Man City did win the FA Cup, and I know for a fact we lost in the semi-finals to Tottenham. And Manchester United did win the Carabao Cup. We only made it to the round of 16 in that tournament, though. PSG did win the Champions League. So in the Europa League, we beat Celtic in the round of 16. Quarterfinals, we beat Fiorentina. Semi-finals, we lost to Roma. Semi-finals of the Europa League and we lost to Roma, who went on to thump Napoli and win the Europa League. This was a season of so close, yet so far. Second in the Prem. Semi-finals in the FA Cup. Semi-finals in the Europa League. What a season, though, for Raksai. 26 goals. He's up to 87 overall and a very impressive first season for Alexander Izak, who gets up to a 23 overall. I'm also very excited to see Jerry Yates. I didn't want to sell him. I want him to be like a Jamie Vardy type character at our club. He's the definition of a super sub. 13 goals off the bench. Gonna be letting Douglas Thumb walk on a free though. I'm not gonna lie. This season hurts. To get so close and not win any silverware, that needs to change. Bring on next season and bring on the Champions League. Here we are kicking off season number seven, lads. And if I'm gonna to be honest, I want another upgrade at the center back role, and I want another Croatian at the center back role. Josko Vardial, let's see if we can bring him across here from Bayern Munich improve our backline. My first offer is 90 million pounds and they want a lot more than that. I mean, we can afford it, but I want to make some more signings out on top of Vardiol this season. 96.9. They still want almost 120 million pounds. God, this feels so expensive. 110 is way more than I want to pay. This is going to be my final offer. Come on, Bayern. They accept it. Bayern accepted and I, I don't know if I feel great about that. But there it is, ladies and gentlemen. We have officially signed Josko Vardiol. Look, there's definitely been pressure on him now to step up given the price tag but I think he's going to be such an important part of our Champions League and Premier League campaigns this year. So let's welcome him with open arms. It's another Croat into the side. Josko Vardial joining us from Bayern Munich. Not going to lie, we've been crying out for a good, solid backup keeper for basically the entire, entire rebuild. So we're going to sign the young American shot stopper here, Cody Gibbs from Chelsea. What's that old like kid spy movie that I used to watch 
when I was like 10 years old. Agent Cody something. Agent Cody Banks. Oh, I was going to say, if it was Agent Cody Gibbs, I would have lost my mind there. An 82 rated Dutch right back Milan Van Ewijk is going to be the next addition to the side. A solid backup. Finishing our season the way we did last year hurt me in the soul. It hurt, man. This team, this team is really good. I want us to be a problem for clubs all around Europe. I want us to win every single trophy because finishing second and getting to semifinals is not what we're about here. I want every title possible. And of course, the one I want the most is the Champions League. We've got a very tough group here. Borussia Dortmund, Club Bruges, and Mitterland, but still... We need to be topping this group. We need to be playing knockout round football. We've got the ambition, the drive. Now let's get the results. This has just filled me up with confidence. We have gone undefeated in the Champions League group stages. Didn't lose to Borussia Dortmund, which makes me a very happy man. And we are into the round of 16 in fine fashion. Only six goals conceded as well. Oh, that is, that is a dream draw right there. No disrespect, but we have got starred Bucharest here in the round of 16. That is, looking at the other teams remaining in the competition, we have been kissed by the FIFA gods. Things aren't going swimmingly, though, in at the Premier League, although we're only six points behind Liverpool. Look at the draws! 9-11, nine wins, 11 draws, one loss. Get the draws out of there. Get out. Get out. We should be winning the league comfortably. Same thing could be said here with Leicester. Leicester, who are sitting third, have 10 draws, 10, wi 10 wins, 10 draws, and one loss. This is a weird season. Don't get it twisted, lads. Yes, this is a great draw. This is a great play. A great team to get drawn up against. But this is the Champions League knockout rounds. We need to make sure that we are locked in here. Start Bucharest clearly in the round of 16 for a reason. Let's not let them get a massive upset against us. Big blow as Patino's into the starting 11 following Willix suspension here for the first leg. I'm hoping that doesn't cost us. First leg in Romania is a 1-0 win. We have absolutely dominated though, so I'm, I'm a little disappointed we only got one goal, but it's a lead nonetheless. We've got the lead. We're back to a full strength starting 11, and we are back in Blackpool here. It's Blackpool versus Bucharest. Second leg. Come on, fellas. Bloomfield Road. Get ourselves through to a Champions League quarterfinal. We do with absolute ease. Greenwood, Isak, and Clark all getting on the score sheet, and we move on. Things just got serious really quickly. We had an easy first leg round. Round of 16 clash against Stard Bucharest. And now we've gone from 0 to 100 real quick because we've got Manchester City. Lord, FIFA gods, give us strength. At home, this is a make or break clash. They've added Rafinha, Nezovic to their side, Skriniar, Botman. This is a good Man City side. Come on, Blackpool. Come on, Blackpool. It's Sam Greenwood giving us the lead in the second half. And we have the advantage heading to the Etihad. The big question is... Is, can we hold on to it? Get us through to the final four. Get us through to the final four. Get us through to the final four. Come on, lads. Second leg in Manchester. Come on, Blackpool. Yes, lads! Despite a comeback from Manchester City, we have comfortably qualified here for the Champions League semifinals. Raksai getting a brace. Rovella getting a goal. And we're headed to the final four. And I'm not going to lie. After that, my confidence is through the roof. Here we go. Two English, one German, and one Spanish team remain. We're trying to wipe out the final Spanish team as we have Barcelona in the Champions League semi-final. First leg's at home. We've been really good at home so far, but we need to keep that up. Evan Ferguson up top there. Moretti, Bastoni. Come on, lads. Take down Barcelona. First leg, it's going to be Sam Greenwood rescuing us in the 89th minute with a goal there to equalize this leg. And it's two yellow cards, so I'm hoping there's not suspensions in the second leg. No suspensions. We're good. Let's go. It is time. We're grabbing our passports, heading to Spain. A spot in the Champions League final on the line, taking on Barcelona. It's the battle of the holiday destinations, Barcelona and Black. Pool. Only one of us is heading to a Champions League final. And it's going to be us in the 89th minute. Rovella is going to be the man. Oh, no. Nah, imagine the scenes. Nicola Rovella, who we signed last year from Liverpool, scores in the 89th minute. And we are heading to a Champions League final. But in the Champions League final here in 2029, we 
are gonna have Borussia Dortmund. Borussia Dortmund versus Blackpool. It's a rematch from the Champions League group stages, a game which we know we can win. Taking a look around the grounds though, it is Inter Milan taking down Tottenham to win the Europa League. Chelsea have won the Conference League. We have stepped up in the second half of the season and we are gonna win our first ever Premier League title with Blackpool. And I think our first trophy in this entire video Five points ahead of Liverpool. You love to see it. Come on, Blackpool. All right, let's go on to the Premier League table, though, and it's going to be Leeds, Brentford, and Wolves going down. I hope, the, I hope the trophy cabinet is ready and prepared. We've added our second trophy of the season. We've done a domestic double as we win the FA Cup. Nah, lads, lads, nah. Nah, we are on. We have done the treble. We have done the domestic treble treble and that now means if we win this champions league final we do the quad oh my god what an unbelievable season here from alexander Izak. 34 goals 29 as well for Raksai, who's now up to 90. i am so excited to use these guys in the champions league final and fingers crossed Toes are crossed. Everything is crossed. We can do the quad. In the real world, they've been relegated to League One. But in this world, Blackpool are 90 minutes away from Europe European supremacy. Let's get the job done. Oh, he's gone through the back of him there. Oh, I thought that could have been a red card for Luke Shaw, but... Yellow is probably the right call. Also, I'm really surprised to see Luke Shaw playing in a Champions League final. What, eight seasons down the line? That, I could make a case for that being a red. Studs were up. Good interception from Vardy Old. Clark, look how fast this man is. Clark, oh my God. No defense right there. Carvalho, what a tackle from the regen marriage. That is huge. Feed it, nice first time pass there. We've got the numbers. We need to be very smart here, lads. I'm going to play the one along the ground. Greenwood takes it back. Still alive. It's going to be Clark. Clark going back. Back. Oh, he's offside. Far out. I knew he's offside. We find the back of the net, but it's offside. We need something before half time here. It's been a very cagey one. Greenwood, the burst of pace. Greenwood. Oh, big tackle from them. But we're going to get a corner. Doing this one in Clark. Come on, mate. Find the big noggin of Isaac. Oh, we could find the front post. What was that technique? Do not let them get an opportunity to start the second half. I'm trying to change players. I'm not changing well at all, but we're lucky that shot was straight at Ruiz. <laughs> Luke Shaw wants to get himself sent off. Come on, Isaac. Come on, Isaac. Green beams, and that is a rocket. That is an absolute rocket there from Alexander Isaac, who is going to give us the lead early in the second half here. Do not let him get right back into this one. Molina. Nah, how's that one? Got to Jao Pedro. What a save. Just clear it. Good ball control here. Dribbling past all of them. The right back. The left back in the box. Going back. Shoot it. Oh, it's a terrible finish. Follow up though. Blocked again. But the follow up. Isaac. Isaac is there to collect the scraps. This dude is an absolute stud. Alexander Isaac is going to double our advantage. Blow that whistle, referee. There it is. He's gone through the back of I thought that might have been a foul, honestly. But we have won a Champions League title here with Blackpool. What a dominant victory. Alexander Isaac, what a signing he was. He was the difference maker in this final. But here we go, lad. It's going to be Sam Greenwood. He's been with us since the very early days. And the Englishman, our captain, is going to lift a Champions League title here for Blackpool. Get in there. But lads, if you enjoyed today's review and you aren't already subscribed, make sure you click here to subscribe and click here to watch another video.